Hey guys, welcome to Little Miss Avery's birth vlog. I thought I would do this vlog to kind of talk about my birth story with Avery. I didn't really get any of it on video except for like when I was laboring a little bit. So I wanted to just um, sit down and talk about how my labor went with her. Obviously she is here. I'm holding her in my arms. She is indeed a girl. <laughs> yes, we are loving baby Avery. She's uh, about two and a half weeks old now. So still very new, very much a newborn. I'm gonna try and do this video as long as she stays asleep and is happy. So hopefully she lasts the whole video, but we will see. And Miss Avery, she was born on March 30th, 2023. I was 39 weeks and one day pregnant. Uh, if you have been following my vlogs, you saw that I was pushing to have an elective induction. I was tired of being pregnant. I wanted her to be born in March so that she could have her own birth month and my oldest son Grayson could have his birth month of April. She was originally due on April 5th. And when I asked my doctor, my OB, how early I could get induced, she said they would not induce me earlier than 39 weeks. So I knew that March 29th was the earliest that I could have her. I tried all the things to make myself go into labor naturally. Uh, I did, drank the teas, I bounced on the ball, I walked, nipple stimulation, all that good stuff. None of it helped, none of it helped at all. I think maybe the teas and the dates, maybe they helped with the thinning of my cervix, but it definitely did not help me dilate at all. So March 29th was early so they would induce me. I finally got put on the wait list on March 30th. That was the first day that I was going to be on this wait list. And basically how it went with my hospital is that if you wanted to do an elective induction, you would basically be put on a wait list. And so only if the hospital had enough room for you that day would you get a call and be able to be induced. If they were having a lot of people, they were super busy, short staffed, whatever, then they just wouldn't call you that day and you would just get pushed the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day until they had time for you or you went into labor yourself. So they basically told me, you know, if a lot of people who had scheduled inductions ended up going into labor on their own, then I would have a spot. Or if there just weren't a lot of people due around that time, I would get a spot. And so I was hoping, hoping, hoping that I would have a spot. They didn't seem very confident that I would get a call the first day. So the morning of March 30th, I took my son Grayson to preschool at nine. They said I would get a call around nine if they had room. If they didn't have room, then I just wouldn't get a call. So like that whole day before, I was like cleaning the house, getting my hospital bag ready, got everything ready to go, hoping that March 30th would be the day that they called. Uh, so like I said, I took my son to Grayson to, to school was waiting by the phone every minute around nine o'clock. Nothing happened. My husband was at work, but wasn't really sure if he was gonna have a full day at work or not work. We were just kind of like in limbo, which I guess is why a lot of people don't like to do elective inductions because it is limbo. Like you don't know if they're gonna call you or not. And then uh, we were talking in the kitchen, I remember, and then all of a sudden about 9.15, my phone rang and it was a Columbus number. And so I got very excited. And so I picked up the phone and they were like, is this Shannon? And I said, yes. And the, <laughs> the guy was so funny on the phone. He was like, oh, this is, you know, the nurse with the hospital. What are you doing today? <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm just waiting for a phone call. And he was like, oh, well, would you like to have a baby today? And I was like, oh my gosh, yes. I was like, you just made my day. And he was like, oh, I'm so glad to hear that. He said, yes, we have room for you. How about you come in to the hospital at noon to be induced? And I said, ah, that is perfect. I will do that. So I was so worried that they were gonna make me come in like super late at night or something. But noon, like I couldn't have planned it better myself. It was so perfect. So I hung up, ran to tell Anthony. He, it was so nice because it was nine o'clock in the morning. So we had three hours to 
get everything wrapped up. Anthony wrapped up everything at work, told his boss, put in his like leave, changed his email so that people knew he was out. Like it was so nice. He had time. He called his parents and let them know what was going on. I called my mom immediately because she, my parents were going to watch the kids while we had Avery. And so I called her. She was so excited. Um, and so I told her to come at like 1130 to watch the kids. And it was perfect because Grayson's preschool is from 9 to 1130. So I was able to go and pick him up from preschool and bring him back. And while he was at preschool, I just had Porter and we were getting last minute things ready, packing last minute things like my toothbrush and you know, whatever else it was that I needed and just getting everything ready to go. And then I picked up Grayson from school, brought him back, met my mom back at the house. She was there. She was good to watch the kids for me. And uh, Anthony and I packed up the car and we headed over to the hospital. It was so weird just having it be so casual, like, oh, just show up at the hospital at noon. And and we're gonna have a baby and we were walking into the hospital and we were like when we walk out we're gonna walk out with another person like it's just so crazy such a vast difference from my second labor because i ran into the emergency room because i was basically like about to have porter <laughs> in the car so this was much more calm much better loved it so we went to the hospital and they got us into a room uh, met our uh, nurse who was going to be working with us. She was super nice, like had been working for a long, long time, very knowledgeable. Got me in a gown. Um, I think I took one last pregnancy picture, so I'll post that here. Yeah, their rooms are super nice at our hospital. You get your own room. Very quiet there. It was super nice. So they checked me and I think I was one centimeter. I was one centimeter dilated and like a wiggle, I think is what the nurse said. So I was bummed that I wasn't further along because since I was not very far dilated, they had to start my induction with a Foley bulb. I hadn't ha ever had that before. When I was induced with my firstborn, I was already like three to four centimeters dilated. So they were just able to start with Pitocin. But because I was not very far dilated with Avery, they had to start the Foley bulb. And that is not comfortable. It's just a lot of pressure. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's like a balloon that they place inside to like get you to dilate. And so yeah, it's just not pleasant. Uh, it wasn't pleasant going in and it wasn't pleasant having it in, but whatever it took. And then they also started me on a low dose of Pitocin to help as well. And it wasn't long after that that my body just started to pick up contractions. It's like as soon as they started that stuff, my body all of a sudden knew like, oh, this is what I need to do and just started contracting. So that was really encouraging. A lot of it was just us waiting around. Uh, the contractions did get more painful as the day went on. They would come and go as contractions do. The Foley bulb did its job and I was about three or four centimeters dilated. Maybe I was four centimeters dilated when I finally asked for the epidural. They got that in. Yeah, it wasn't pleasant having that done, but not to feel the contractions. It was so worth it. Funny enough, I my right side, my right leg got so much more numb than my left side did. I don't know why that was, but it's like my left side, I could kind of move it. My right was like just dead. <laughs> they got that done and I felt much better. And then they kind of had me like on my side with a peanut ball to kind of uh, encourage baby to come down. I will say with my epidural, my contractions did slow down and my dilating slowed down, which is very common with epidurals. They kind of sometimes might slow down your labor and that's what happened. So they did increase the Pitocin a little bit to try to get more contractions to come. They had me lay on my left side with the with the peanut ball between my legs. And then after a while, they flipped me over to my right side with the peanut ball. I really didn't enjoy those positions. I don't know why I just couldn't get comfortable. And I don't know, it just wasn't pleasant. They still saw that I wasn't really making any progress. They did decide to break my water. A midwife was doing all the stuff. She did the Foley bulb. She broke my water and everything because my OB was just on call. And so they weren't gonna call her until like at the very end when I was about to push. 
So they did break my water. It was clear, fluid, so that was all good. And then after laying on my side, wasn't really doing much, they decided to just have me sit up. And I felt so much better just being able to sit up, like looking out and just being in that position. I felt so much better. And it, it was like not even 10 minutes later, all of a sudden I felt like a lot of pressure down there. Um, there was like one contraction and then it was just like a ton of pressure. So they had the nurse come in and check me and they were like, oh yeah, you're like basically 10 centimeters dilated, like ready to push. So then they quickly were calling my OB. Thankfully, she was only like 15 minutes away, but still I had to wait 15 minutes. So she was racing on her way. They basically had a midwife come in my room and stand in the room just in case I was gonna have to push the baby out and I wouldn't be able to wait for the OB. So that was kind of annoying. For 15 minutes or so, I basically just had to like lay there and deal with the contractions coming on. It seemed like my epidural wore off a little bit and they were getting painful again. Uh, the whole time I could feel the contractions, but they were mostly just pressure. And then towards the end, like they did start to get painful again. So they did let me, like they have a button you can push, you can get more epidural. So I did do that and that did help a little bit. I was like so overwhelmed uh, in those like 15 minutes waiting for the OB because it had seemed like my labor had stalled because of the uh, epidural and nothing really happened and then all of a sudden they sat me up and then that just did the trick and all of a sudden I went like super fast through transition and then was like ready to have the baby and so I started crying because I was getting overwhelmed I just didn't expect it to happen that fast thankfully Anthony was there the whole time he was holding my hand he was um, encouraging me it was really nice and they had like the midwife there our nurse there and then there was like a baby nurse there they were all encouraging me as well it was really helpful to have all those people just telling me those nice things while I was going through a painful time so I kept feeling contractions I kept feeling my body invo involuntarily push uh, but the baby wasn't coming yet, so thankfully I was able to make it. My OB ran into the room. Everybody got all set up. They got my feet in the stirrups. Um, they had me push, and I want to say I pushed once or twice. I think it was twice, and then she just came out. It was super fast, probably just as fast as Porter's was, because I think I pushed him once or twice, and he was out too. Grayson, my first, I had to push for an hour. <laughs> I remember that. I pushed forever. This time it was so fast. Anthony did say that when she, when Avery came out, she did have the cord around her neck. It was wrapped once around her neck, um, but he said the my OB doctor quickly just took it off. She was very purple when she came out, and so they were a little concerned about that, but then she started crying like right away, and so then they felt good about that, and then like less than five minutes later, she started pinking up, and her skin looked way better, so they felt much better about that. None of my other kids have had cord issues or anything like that, and I didn't even realize like that was going on. I was just so like wrapped up in the moment, so it wasn't until after everything had happened that Anthony told me about that cord. So I'm almost glad I didn't know because that would have just like freaked me out. Yeah, they delivered her and put her on my chest. We did skin to skin. She was so cute and so tiny. They said I didn't tear at all, which was awesome. I tore a bunch with Grayson and I tore a little bit um, with my second with Porter and with her she said I didn't tear at all. The placenta came out fine. My OB was basically in there for like 10 minutes and then like delivered the baby, saw everything was good and then she was like okay bye. <laughs> So super easy job for her and I was able to do my skin to skin they wanted to like get her measurements and stuff but I had them hold off because I just wanted to you know that first hour of skin to skin is just so important with your baby and so um, yeah I had her on me and Anthony was texting my family and his family and updating everyone and, and trying to send some pictures but it's so hard to send pictures when they're like doing skin to skin because your boobs are out and you don't want to send like revealing pictures and stuff like that yeah got all that and uh, she was just so sweet and then finally they got her measurements and so she was seven pounds four ounces and she was 21 and a half inches long 
So Avery was our smallest baby. Our first was seven pounds, 15 ounces. Our second was eight pounds, four ounces. So she was the tiniest, although I did kick her out a week early, almost a week early. And then while she was our smallest baby, she was our longest baby. Grayson was 20 inches long, Porter was 21 inches long, and she was 21 and a half inches long. She's a very long baby. So she's skinny, but very long. So they got all those uh, off of her. She passed like all their tests great. They gave her the vitamin K and like, you know, the shots and stuff like that. And she did well with that. Yeah, everything was great. We stayed in our labor room for two hours. They tried to get me out to go to the bathroom, but my, while my left leg was doing fine, uh, the epidural was starting to wear off, my right leg was still so dead. It took uh, several hours, and then finally my right leg finally came back to life, but it took a bit. And I will say my back was sore for a good two to three days after she was born from that epidural. My back feels fine now. I mean, it hurts, but it's mostly because like I'm leaning over a lot, carrying her, nursing her. It's not from the epidural. And then my recovery, I honestly felt great. Um, since I didn't tear, uh, there really wasn't that much hurt down there. I was definitely swollen, but you know, they give you the ice packs and the witch hazel and all that stuff helped a lot. So my recovery was really fine. Of course, nipple soreness after a couple days, nothing as bad as my first. The first is just, was really hard because you just, it's everything for the first time. I recovered really, really well and they got us into our, um, postpartum room and that was really nice we had our own room yeah she just honestly slept a lot while we were in the hospital she's such an angel baby she just sleeps all the time she hardly cries she loves being held but what baby doesn't but she slept really good um, those two nights we were in the hospital she's been a really really good baby so we just have a good time in the hospital bonding as a family of three just kind of soaking her all in um, we did have visitors um, that next day on march 31st my hospital had visiting hours from 3 p.m to 8 p.m so it was kind of nice we had like the morning to just kind of like have our to ourselves and kind of slowly get up and you know there's always nurses coming in checking on the baby checking on you all that stuff so we had people come that whole visiting hour, the whole five hours, we had people. We had my parents, all my siblings that were in town uh, came and visited. Anthony's parents came and visited. So it was really nice to see everybody and everybody just loved seeing the baby. We had our kids come, Grayson and Porter, and they got to meet their sister. And it was just, it was really fun. It was really nice. My sister came and brought me Subway. That's always like my number one requested post delivery meal it was so yummy it was so so good that hospital food is not good so it was so nice to have some like outside food and everybody loved getting to take pictures of avery and hold her and it was just so fun because she was like the first girl and so sweet so we were in the hospital we came in the 30th and then we left april 1st so like three days total we were in the hospital. They were saying like, oh, if you wanted to, you could get out within 24 hours and so you'd only have to stay one night. But we ended up staying two nights because they did have some concerns about Avery. So the first concern that they had was about her head. So I think it was just the way she was laying in my belly. Her like skull plates were just like really far apart and it was very noticeable on her head. And so they did an ultrasound of her head just to make sure there wasn't anything like wrong with the plates or anything, like if they were, I don't, I don't know what their concerns were. But they told us that the ultrasound showed that she's totally fine, nothing was wrong. And two weeks later, her head is looking so much better. The plates are slowly fusing together and not being so spread apart and, um, she's looking much better. So it must have just been how she was in my belly or didn't form all the way or whatever. Uh, if you remember, if you were here when I had my second porter, he had a funny head that like had, was in the beginning. It was like tilted to one side. We actually had to go and get x-rays done of his head when he was like two or three months old and they found that he was fine. It was just the way that the head was in my belly and eventually like now his head is totally fine. He's two and a half and his head looks normal. So same with hers. Um, hers was just different. 
part but that was totally fine and then on the last day they did like her last checkup with the pediatrician and when they listened to her heart they heard a heart murmur and so they wanted to do a echo a fetal echo of her heart which is basically just like an ultrasound of her heart to see you know where that heart murmur was coming from and that took forever so we were hoping to get out of the hospital by noon on that last day and we didn't end up leaving the hospital until like 5 p.m we had to wait for the team from nationwide children's to come to the hospital to do the echo and then they did the echo and then we waited like four hours to get the results it was really frustrating we just wanted to be out of the hospital when they finally called us with the results they found that she does have a underdeveloped aortic valve i think and so they said it wasn't anything concerning it's not anything we need to do anything different about right now but it is something that they want to follow and um, continue to watch to see if it will fix itself over time or if you know if it gets worse or whatever we do have a follow-up appointment with nationwide children's um, in about a month and they're gonna do another echo on her heart and then we'll get to meet with the doctor because we weren't able to be there at the echo when they did it and then the pediatrician just like called me over the phone so we are looking forward to that appointment to kind of get more of an update on how it's looking and if it's getting better or staying the same and how we proceed so that's gonna come up but we did talk to her pediatrician when we had her first pediatrician appointment and he kind of explained it a little better to us he was like basically like the valve is just kind of like domed right now and um over time hopefully it'll just strengthen and then become flat and 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 then it would be fine sorry i'm probably not explaining it that well but i'm not like a cardiologist so that's just what I can remember. So basically she has a little bit of a heart issue, but it's not anything that we need to be concerned about right now. So we'll see how her uh, next cardiologist appointment goes. We never had any heart issues or any issues at all with the boys. So this is kind of new with us, but um, it sounds like it's not too concerning. So definitely we'll keep you updated. But other than that, she's so healthy. She passed her hearing screening and like all the other newborn screenings she's totally fine on. So she's been so good. Finally went home and then we've just been adjusting. My parents kept the boys for uh, one night after we got home just so we could like slowly transition back home. And then they brought the boys over and then we've just been living as a family of five ever since. So Anthony has three weeks of paternity leave and then he's going to go back to work for a month and then he'll take another three weeks off in June. So he's on his last week of paternity leave this week. He goes back a week from today and he's been helping me a lot with the kids getting up with them in the morning so i can sleep in because i'm up all night with the baby taking grace into preschool and just helping me out with different things around the house so it's been fun we it's been good weather here and there so on the good weather days we go out on walks and uh try to get outside she was a little jaundiced when we went home from the hospital her eyes were like the whites of her eyes were kind of yellow we did some vitamin d drops and then we've been getting her out in the sunshine and now she looks totally fine the pediatrician looked her over and said she looks awesome and the pediatrician didn't have any concerns about her said she looks great and she's really just been an awesome angel baby uh we had newborn pictures done a couple days ago uh i'm still waiting to get those back and she just slept the whole time during the photo shoot and she's just been so so good very chill baby so we're very lucky and we're so happy to have her but that's kind of it for Avery's birth story. I guess I kind of elaborated even more than probably needed to be. Oh, she was born at 6.40 p.m. So we went in to be induced at noon and then I had her at 6.40. So it was pretty good. Wasn't too long, wasn't too short. Got the epidural, wasn't too painful. And uh, yeah, it was great.
perfect so yeah i think that's all about avery um i'll show you guys her a little close-up of her face because she's just so sweet so here's little avery she's just snoozing away so thank you guys so much for watching this vlog of Avery's birth story. I love being able to sit down and talk about these while it's still fresh in my mind so that I can come back to these videos years and years down the line and remember all the details of each child's birth. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you see more videos of this cute little baby. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys. Say bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Avery says bye. Thanks for watching.